Good morning, Year 6. Welcome to Wednesday of Week 4. Let's go through our first activity for the, for the day is our literacy contract. So like Mrs. Moore and I have said throughout the week, this week you guys are doing two different literacy contract activities. I want you guys to be doing them to a high standard. Now, what we want you guys to focus on as well is like we normally would in class, we've got five star tasks and five non-star tasks to do. Make sure that you guys are trying to make those star tasks a priority. So do them first before you start looking at some of the non-star task activities. You guys have got the space to do it on the next two slides here and there. And make sure that you guys are doing your work to a high standard and putting in as much effort as you can for it. And moving on to shared reading. Okay, so shared reading this week, oh no, not this week, today, is Christine Musket. Um, Christine Musket is one of my old Corpus Christi girls and she, again, won the competition in 2015. So she used two famous people as examples of standing up and being different. So she used Jesus and Nelson Mandela. So on the next slide, we want you to think about what did these people, these two people stand up for? So what did Jesus stand up for? She tells you in her speech, what did they stand up for? List, list some things, not just one, give us a couple of things that they stood up for. And then how and why did Christine use these two people to support her speech? Why did she use Jesus? And why did she use Nelson Mandela? What did they do that gave that gave the to, that gave the support that she needed in her speech? What was that support that she needed from those two people? How are they good examples, Mr. Moore? How are they good examples of being different? Yes, because her speech is all about being different. And yeah. she talks about how she's different to everyone else because she likes classical music and things like that. She's not one that likes, I think she talks about Miley Cyrus in her in her speech. So then, yeah, you six just going through and find that supporting evidence. Um, so find some quotes from the speech that backs up what and how it says, how did these two people that she used, how do they back up her speech about being different and about being unique? Because they were different and they were unique mm -hmm. in what they did in their lives. Um, moving on to writing. So writing today is you continuing on with your palm cards from yesterday. Now, yesterday, Mr. Martin and I talked to you about the fact that the palm cards are for you only. So these palm cards are for you to understand. It's not for Mr. Martin and I to look at. It's for you. So you really need to be thinking about what am I going to have on these palm cards? How am I going to be able to memorize my speech using these palm cards? And we want you to really be thinking as well today about um, timing your speech and seeing, do I go for two to four minutes? So what do I have in, do, in my speech? Do I have enough information? Do my palm cards support me in being able to deliver my speech the best way I can, just like all these other people we've been watching in our shared reading over the last three weeks. I think that's all, Mr. Martin, for writing. Yeah. Can't think of anything extra. So like Mrs. Moore said, if you guys are up to the stage where you've created your palm cards, utilise this time to start really becoming familiar with your speech and making sure that you write it the best way you possibly can. Um, so that'll take us up to then maths, Mrs. Moore. So like we said last week, or like we've been saying, since we've been doing online learning, warm up, matific, or a study ladder activity. Now, this is another question about sharing and about using division. So Dom's grade um, are going on a school outing and there are 160 students in the grade and the students must be placed into small groups during the outing. There must be no less than four students in a group and no more than 10 students in each group. How many different students or how many different groups could there be with how many students in them? So we want you guys to think about some different options. So how could you split up these 160 students into equal groups? No more than six or no, no less than four students in each group, no more than 10. What would those groups look like? How many kids are going to be in each group? So that tells me, Mr. Martin, that we need more than one answer. Yes, we do. We need more than one answer. Like see if you can, guys can get as many different answers as you can. Now, you guys can either do your work into a book or you can put your work underneath here or on the next page as well. Moving into religion. So 
we were look um the feast of jesus's grandparents was on the 26th of july so i found two websites for you to go to they're just small they're from the kittle websites and they just give us information about jesus's grandparents and what mr martin and i would like you to do is we just want you to read the websites and we just want you to use some dot points and record some new information that you didn't actually know about jesus's grandparents as mr martin and i were reading we're like oh i didn't know that about his grandparents so we were quite interested as well and um, that connection that he's that mary's um these are mary's parents and so the connection that mary's parents had with god before mary was even born so it kind of made me think about oh that's maybe why god chose mary because he already had a connection with mary already so just have a read through it it's nothing tricky it's just what's your new learning from reading those two websites all right, you six, well, have a great Wednesday. Enjoy your day and we will see you on our 9.30 Zooms. See you, six. Bye, you six.